Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Thanks for joining me on today's episode where we'll be making cold process soap. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to make these soapy frosting flowers. First we'll be making the base that the frosting flowers go onto, and then I'll be showing you how to actually make the frosting. We'll be using micas and lab colors for this. The mica is an aqua mica and it doesn't bleed, meaning it won't migrate into the flowers. However, the lab colors are water soluble and they can bleed, meaning the yellow and the orange will end up mixing. But that's okay because in this design, we want an ombre effect. This soap uses Mmm, yum. Sweet grass for the base, and then in the frosting, rise and shine. Sweet grass is more of a musky, grassy note, whereas the rise and shine is a bright, effervescent citrus, uh, reminiscent of Japanese grapefruit. Now, if you've never made cold process soap before, you gotta stop here and review the first four episodes in the cold process series on Soap Queen TV, or just read the first few chapters of my book, Soap Crafting on Safety. Soaping is not something to be taken lightly, and I really want you to get the basics down before you proceed with this advanced recipe. Let's make our blue bases. Disperse two teaspoons of aqua blue mica into one tablespoon of a lightweight oil. I'm using sweet almond oil. Using a mini mixer or a tiny mini whisk, just go ahead and push down so that the mica is fully mixed in. You want it to be mixed in because if you turn on that mini mixer before it's mixed in, poof, the mica will go everywhere. If you want to learn more about blending colorants, I do have a Soap Queen TV short on how to blend colors. Next, Prep your fragrance. Measure out, by weight, two ounces of sweetgrass fragrance oil in a glass container. Do not use plastic or styrofoam, because I am here to tell you from bad experiences that plastic and styrofoam can get eaten by fragrance oils and essential oils, and the last thing you want is an oily puddle all over your countertops. Now, the most important step. I am going to suit up for safety. So, Soap Queen goggles on and gloves on. And of course, I don't have any children or pets in the immediate vicinity, and I'm soaping in a room that has a lot of ventilation. My lye water and my oils are right around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's a great temperature to soap, but I wanna do one additional thing. Because we're soaping with silicone molds, the soap takes a little bit longer to release. I have a secret though. I like to use sodium lactate in my recipes to make them harder faster. Sodium lactate is the salt of lactic acid, and it's commonly used as a food preservative. The usage rate is one teaspoon per pound of oils, so for this recipe, I'm gonna be using about two teaspoons for my entire recipe. Add the two teaspoons directly to the lye water, and you're ready to go. Now it's time to make soap. Pour your lye water gently and slowly down the shaft of your stick blender. The reason I do this is it helps to prevent air bubbles. And once it's all in there, give your stick blender a good burp. Just thump it on the bottom. That way, any air that's trapped under the head of the stick blender will rise to the surface. Because if you stick blend air into your soap, what ends up happening is you get little, well, air bubbles in the soap that look like white little bits when the soap is fully hard. They don't hurt anything. It's just an aesthetic thing, but I prefer not to have them, so burp that stick blender. Stick blend for 60 to 90 seconds until you get a pretty decent trace. Now, I want you to just move that stick blender around and make sure that you actually have a trace. This is a really common mistake that newbies make, thinking that they have trace when, eh, it's not quite there yet. So I'm just gonna give it another burst with the stick blender. And, ah, uh, I do have a pretty good trace here. I'd like it to be just a little bit thicker, so. That's great. Now at this point, you can go ahead and add your entire dispersed aqua blue colorant and your fragrance oil. I know this seems like it's a lot of colorant, but not to worry. Even with all of this colorant, the soap is not going to lather up blue. You can either mix this in by hand with a whisk or just stick blend it for like five or 10 seconds to get the fragrance and the colorant mixed in really well. And now it's time to pour. 
I'm going to start pouring into the mold. You can fill these most of the way up. You do have enough in the recipe to go most of the way. Now looking at my soap, I notice it's getting just a teensy bit grainy, so I'm just going to whisk a little bit to get that emulsion back. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Keep pouring and try and pour as flat as possible because this is the surface that our soapy flowers are going to go onto next. Carefully move your silicone mold so that may mean putting it on something like a cutting board to move it safely because this is a pretty floppy mold. That's what I did here. And of course, when it comes time to unmold, I'll be super happy that this mold is so floppy because it does help with the unmolding. And now this is all done, go ahead and spray with 91% to 99% rubbing alcohol to help prevent soda ash. Set that soap aside and get ready to do your next step. While I prep for the frosting, I'm going to take my safety equipment off because I don't need it quite for the first part. So, making our frosting is pretty interesting. First of all, I've had to cool down my oils and my lye water until they're eh, 80 to 90 degrees or even cooler. You can do this when you make your lye water by putting your lye water into an ice bath. Make sure you don't leave that lye water unattended ever, ever, ever. Watch over it the entire time. It is far too easy for accidents to happen and I want you to be safe when you're soaping. Temperatures are also key with the oils in this recipe, not just the lye water. So before you get ready to make this frosting, measure, and melt and mix all of your oils together into a container. Toss that into the refrigerator or freezer until it becomes as solid as it's going to get. Most soap frostings are between 70 to 90% solids, so they won't always get completely solid. You may end up with more of a slush like we have here, but it's as cold as it's going to possibly get. Before we suit up for safety, let's prep our frosting bags. For the green, which makes our beautiful little flower stems, just cut the teensiest, tiniest tip off. For the soapy flowers, cut a bigger tip off because you're going to be using an actual soap frosting tip that is made by Wilton. You can buy at Brambleberry, and it's the 1M size. Now that the frosting tips have been cut off and we're ready to roll with our equipment, the most important step for the frosting recipe, again, Suiting up for safety. So, long sleeves on, long pants on, have my goggles on, getting my gloves on. My kids and my pets are still in another room and I am soaping in an area that has a really great ventilation. The key to making this recipe is this handy stand mixer. You do not want to be whipping the frosting for half an hour to 40 minutes all on your own. It's great to have this mechanical device to actually do it for you because this process takes a good 40 minutes. Slowly and carefully pour the lye water into your slushy oils. Now take a stirring implement. You could either use a spatula or you could use a whisk and gently stir that lye water into your slushy oils. And when I say gently, do not use any sudden movements because eh, lye water could go everywhere. Once that's fully homogenized, put your whisk on and close your stand blender, lock your stand blender in place, and then start low. When you start on the lowest speed is because we don't want any of this caustic soap to go whoosh everywhere. So start on the lowest speed and then work up. My stand mixer has 10 different speeds. I use this on eight for the entire process. Now remember, this is a long process. You do need to stay here and watch it the entire time, especially if you have any children in the house because this looks a lot like frosting or something that's baking. Okay, I'm gonna check, ooh, yeah. This is really not getting that thick. There are no peaks forming here. So go ahead and lock and load again and put this on eight and let's let this go for another five or 10 minutes. Let me check this again. Huh, it's looking a little bit better. If any of the soap has crept up the side, just take a, spatula and just push it on down in there. Well, I've been blending for like 30 minutes and this is still not getting the peaks I want. So now it's time to bring in the big guns, the stick blender. Now this is too thick for the stick blender to actually really get. So I'm just kind of plopping it in and out, getting that just a little bit thicker. Note, this is an optional step if your frosting is taking as long as mine is. If you're working in a hotter room, your frosting is going to take longer to make. Now this is a great consistency. This actually looks like frosting and it's holding its peaks perfectly. 
Now it's time to add your fragrance or essential oil. No, nope, this may thin out your frosting again and you may end up whipping a lot longer. This frosting looks great. It's time to split it into three different containers. And just, just eyeball it. To one container, add three milliliters of canary lab color. This is diluted lab color, so it's not straight lab color like you get it from brambleberry.com. Into the next container, add 17 milliliters of emerald, diluted. And in the final container, add 11 milliliters of peach lab color. Now, fill your bags. I am not a professional pastry chef, and as you're about to find out, I really can't frost very well. But one of the tips I have learned is that if you put your bags inside of a glass like this and just kind of fold back the edges, it's a lot easier to fill them. I'm going to put green in the one that has the tiny little opening. Remember, that's for our stems. And then yellow in one side of this bag. Ugh. Careful, careful, don't get on the other side. And then orange on the other side. Whew. Careful, don't get it in there. Ah, that looks good. Now push all the soap frosting to the front of that bag. Grasp your bag and let's practice making soapy flowers. You can do this into a silicone mold or you can do this just on wax paper. Start outward and then work in and kind of mount it in the middle and boom, there we go. See, I told you I wasn't great at frosting, but this technique is so cute, I don't think it matters. Now let's make the real thing. The soap we made earlier, your blue bases, they're hard. So grab them and start making your flowers. Again, work outward and then work in and doop, stop in the middle. And there goes another one. And doop, done. Whew. The soap is pretty hard. Frosting is, takes a little bit of elbow grease to get out, but it's so cute. It's completely worth it. Now it's time to make our stems. Take your green frosting and ugh, I'm a little shaky. And there we go. You know, this is a little hard to push out. I think that's why I'm a little shaky. I'm just gonna cut a little bit more off. I think that'll help. Okay, now let's try this. Uh, much better, straight lines, much easier to push out. And my little leaves. Finish all your soap up and then spray it with 91% to 99% rubbing alcohol to help prevent soda ash. Allow the soap to sit and dry in the mold for at least three to four days. When you're getting ready to release it, just pull gently away from the sides. And if the soap doesn't want to come out easily, wait a few more days. It's not worth it to ruin your soap just to get it out early. This technique is great because really it's just limited by your own imagination and in my case, skill level. However, there are a lot of possibilities for what you can do with soap frosting. In fact, these are a few that I made earlier this week and I think they look adorable. These soap flowers get extremely hard. In fact, they feel just as hard as the base soap below. Make sure you wait the full four to six weeks for your soap to cure and dry before you sell these, give them away, or use them yourself. And that's it. You've made soapy flowers. Until next time, thanks for joining me on Soap Queen TV. Happy soaping! So watch this the entire time, even though, yeah, it's like waiting for soap to trace, or watching a pot boil, or waiting for paint to dry.